Hello, everyone. This is Tim Kelly at TNT Dental. And I uh, want to welcome you so far, but uh, also wanted to let you know that we're going to officially start at about 2.05. So about five minutes from now, we're going to let um, uh, everyone have a chance to log on here. The numbers are still flowing in. So I'll be back with you to officially start at 2.05. Welcome again to all of those who are continuing to sign up. Uh, we have a large presentation today and are very excited about that. So we're just giving everyone a chance to get logged in. Um, officially, we'll start in two minutes at 2.05.
Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you all for coming. My name is Tim Kelly. I'm one of the founding partners at TNT Dental. And uh, not only thank you, I, I wanna applaud all of you for um, attending today. We have a large crowd, we're very excited about that. But this is obviously an extraordinary time that we're all going through, unprecedented in many ways. And I'm, I'm an optimist about things. I always try to see the uh, bright side in everything. And I think one of the silver linings here is that we all have a chance uh, to get to now talk to many of our clients about this already, have a chance to do some of the things uh, that we don't always have the chance to do when the practices are at full capacity. And, 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 um, and today we do. We do have a chance to, uh, to dig into this and emerge, I think, uh, much stronger and much smarter uh, when the time comes to go back to work. And to that end, I'm thrilled to say that we have one of the smartest people in dentistry uh, to present to us today. And um, within dentistry, he probably doesn't need an introduction, but I'm gonna give him one anyway. Today's presentation entitled Case Acceptance for Complete Care Without Losing Patients to Sticker Shock, presented by Dr. Paul Homily, who is a world-class leader in dental education, as a comprehensive restorative dentist and acclaimed educator, for over 30 years, he's known for his innovative and practical approach to dentistry. As the president of Homily Communications Institute, which is a resource for personal, professional, and practice building skills, Dr. Homily is uniquely suited to prevent, present this free hour-long class on increasing case acceptance. So with that, I'll turn over the presentation to Dr. Homily. Welcome, Dr. Homily. Hey, well, Tim, thanks, and, and thanks to uh, all my friends at TNT Dental. You know, for those of you on the webinar, Tim Kelly and I have been talking about what can we do to make it easier for dentists who are maybe shut down or shut down partially from this COVID-19 issue. And, you know, our discussion kind of centered around the importance of staying connected to team members. And this webinar is it going to is going to be a great way for everyone to do that we will have uh, a situation here to where i'm going to go through some of the big pieces of the treatment acceptance process that may, some of you may be familiar with maybe uh, some of you have already seen me speak in seminars but today i really want to drill down on some of the essential aspects of case acceptance for complete dentistry without losing patients from sticker shock so Let's, let's just jump right in on this. I want you to think about when you buy a home, when you buy real estate. You go up to your realtor and you say to them, hey, we're thinking about getting this home over there at the park. And your wife says, yes, we want to be near the schools. And the realtor, who's a former dentist, who, when he was practicing dentistry, educated patients, educate, educate, educate. This realtor now uses the same process that he used with selling dentistry, that is he wants to educate his home buyers. So when he hears you say, well, we're interested in a home near the park and your wife says we're interested in schools, he goes, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Before we start talking about parks and homes and all of that, what you really got to think about is the foundation of the house. The foundation of the house is the most important thing. And then he shows you pictures of different foundations and he says there's three different types of foundations. We've got cement slab, four foot crawl space, and in a full, a full basement. Full basement can be poured concrete or cement block. And then he shows you photomicrograms of, of cement block joints. And it says, and before we do any of this for you, I want you to spend some time in talking to our bricklayer to make sure that you can keep your bricks clean before we build your house. Now, now let me ask you something. If the realtor said that to you, what would you think? you would probably think about finding a new realtor. And the point of all this is that good realtors approach a home sale from the outside of the home in, in that they really look at what are the areas around the house that we must first consider. Let me show you what I'm talking about here and apply it to dentistry. The, the typical treatment acceptance conversation that I learned and that you learned and that we were we learned in dental school and continuing education is what I call an inside out process. That is, we start our new patient procedures with, with different procedures that, that relate to being on the inside of the patient's mouth. We do exams and x-rays and we talk to patients about their teeth 
and we tell them what we see and how we can fix them. And then when we're done with that conversation, we delegate to a team member or a treatment coordinator and they present care of the fees and insurance. And, and it's at that point that your office discovers those issues that are outside of the patient's mouth. You learn about the patient's budget. When you quote the fee, your, your chances are pretty strong you're gonna learn about the patient's budget when you quote the fee. You're also gonna learn about their life events, what you need to do to fit the dentistry into their life. You're gonna learn about the patient's schedule. You're gonna learn about the patient's family issues. So an inside out process to the um, uh, treatment acceptance process is typically we start on the inside of the mouth and then it's only after inside of the mouth procedures that we learn what's on the outside of the mouth. And what I'm gonna to suggest to you is that to present care, especially for care that's you know greater than five, eight, ten thousand dollars and up, um, I'm gonna to suggest to you that you might change your thinking about an inside out approach and consider what I call an outside in approach. An outside in approach is that we're gonna get time, we're gonna take time to understand patients, take time to discover, well, what, what is a budget that they can work with? What, is, what are the life events? What are the family events? What are the schedules? You see, this is what a good realtor does. A good realtor decides on, well, what is your price range? What neighborhoods do you wanna live in? Uh, how, how close do you wanna to be to work? What schools do you wanna be? You know, all the outside the house issues. Then when outside the house issues are decided, then and, and only then does it make sense to discuss the inside the house issues, number of bedrooms, size of the yard, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna to suggest to you that to avoid losing patients from sticker shock for those higher fee cases that we use an outside in approach. Now, here's a piece of, here's a piece of information that is key to understanding when to use an inside out versus an outside in process. I, I want you to think that, I want you to think about all your patients, your entire patient base being divided into basically two segments. Those patients whose complete care needs are less than $3,500, typically three or fewer restorative units, or patients whose complete care fee is greater than $3,500, three or more restorative units. You notice that the horizontal scale at the bottom of the slide we have simple tooth dentistry all the way on the left. And as you go from left to right on the horizontal scale, the, the complexity of the care increases. So we go from simple fillings and cleanings, then maybe the one crown, two crown, three crowns. And then as you cross over three or four crowns, you cross the point where I call centric relation dentistry. That's the vertical line that goes up and down this graph. That's the point at which the case becomes more complicated where you need to change variables and vertical dimension planes of occlusion, um, anterior guidance and condylar positions. Now the case is complicated. What we're gonna call, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a nomenclature here to help you decide inside out versus outside in. For those patients whose complete care needs are fewer than $3,500, we're gonna call these patients left side patients because you see, they, they are left of the centric relation line. Left side patients are left of that line. Right side patients are to the right of that line. So let's get into the distinction between left and right side patients. Let's start with left side patients. Left side patients typically are young. Left side patients typically have minor conditions. Conditions are those entities that are outside normal limits. Left side patients have minor disability. Here's a key thing. If you're taking notes, now's the time to start. A disability is the emotional component of the patient's condition. Um, the condition might be a chip front tooth. The disability is they're embarrassed about it. The disability is the emotional component. The disability is how the condition interferes with the patient's lifestyle. Left side patients typically have minor fit issues. Fit issues are those life circumstances that we need to fit our dentistry into, their budget, 
their work schedule, their family issue, health events. And what I'm saying here is that typically left side patients who have relatively modest fees and, and really don't need to spend a lot of time in the dental office, they don't have significant fit issues. In other words, it's easier for them to fit the dentistry into their lives. Here's a key point. The driver of treatment acceptance for left side patients is patient education. Here's why. Oftentimes left side patients don't have any symptoms. They're not aware of their conditions. And you've all had that experience. Patient comes in, you say, hey, how can I help you today? And they say, I don't know, doc, I'm just getting a checkup for work or, or for my insurance purposes. And you say, terrific, anything bothering you? They go, no, I think I'm fine. You put them in a chair, you take a bunch of x-rays and they got class two decay, they got missing teeth, they got periodontal disease, right? And they may be unaware of those conditions. So then what do we do? We show them photographs, we, we educate them to their conditions. And so when we educate patients to conditions, now they become concern and concern is a form of disability. So with left side patients, we educate them into disability. Patient education is the driver of treatment acceptance for left side patients. And that's the process most of us use for our entire career is educating patients. Finally, these folks typically are ready for care. When I say ready for care, they're gonna get something done within a month or so. Why are they ready? Because it fits. It's not a major, it, it, it doesn't interfere significantly with their lifestyle. They can fit their dentistry into. So generally they're ready for care. This type of patient responds well to the inside out approach. We do the exam, we make recommendations, and then the outside the mouth, mouth issues are dealt with because they're not deal breakers. They're not that significant in most patients' lives. Let's talk about right side patients. Totally different. Right side patients typically are older. Right side patients have significant conditions. Right side patients have major disabilities. They can't eat, they hate the way they look. They have poor nutrition. They have problems with intimacy. These folks have major fit issues. It's no longer a, a $200 or a $350 treatment plan. It could be $10,000, $15,000 or $20,000. I know when I first started practicing, a $10,000 fee was an incredibly large fee. Now with implants and, and uh, the cosmetic dentistry, patients can pay, uh, fees can be $10,000 per quadrant on some patients. So the fit issues here are significant. And not only is it cost, but also it's time in treatment. Patients need to spend a lot of time in the dental office. That interferes with their work life, uh, their family life. And so the fit issues are significant here. Here is a major distinction between left and right side patients. Right side patients are less influenced by patient education than our left side patients. The driver of treatment acceptance for the right side patients is giving them the experience of being understood. Understood, what that means is that you understand their budget, their family issues, their health, all the factors that we need to take into account of how they need to fit their dentistry into their life. There's a specific process for this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. How do you give right side patients the experience of being understood? I'm gonna to get to that. And finally, these folks rarely, they're rarely ready for complete care the first time they hear their treatment plan. Why? It's simple, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit their schedule, it doesn't fit their budget. And oftentimes these patients need several months or a year or more to get their, to get their, their finances, to get their house in order before they can accept care. And I would suggest to most of you, most of you, if you think about your biggest cases, your biggest cases typically have been in your practice for a year or more. Why? Because patients need to get ready for care. These patients respond to the outside in approach. That is, we're gonna take time to understand those outside to mouth issues of what's affordable for them, how it needs to fit into the life, what's going on with their schedule, what's going on with their family. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. 
coming up. So the, the big takeaway here is the driver of treatment acceptance for left side patients is patient education. Why? Because they're unaware of their conditions. We educate in them into their conditions that creates disability. And because it fits, they're generally more ready for care. Right side patients, totally different. They're already aware they've got dental conditions. They may not know their individual pocket depths, but they do know they're unhappy. They're experiencing disability. And what we do is we take time, we take time to understand their life events. And it's through this experience of giving them the, like, giving them a sense that we understand their needs that is the motivator for them to accept care. And they may not accept complete care the first time they hear their treatment plan. So the trick there is to stay in, stay connected with these patients. That's why I enjoy my relationship with, with TNT Dental. You see, with TNT Dental, they can help you keep in touch with these people through marketing efforts and through social media outreaches and all the different tools that they can apply to stay connected to these right side patients who are more or less in, in an incubation period. They're still thinking and they're still planning to get their teeth fixed. Okay, so now let's, let's apply this to a right side patient. Here's Christine. Christine is a new right side patient. She comes into your office. What's the process we're gonna put Christine through, okay? What we're gonna start with Christine is a concept called the four chiefs. The four chiefs is a conversation that you, the dentist, not your office manager, not the front desk people, not the dental assistant, not the dental hygienist, but you, the dentist, will have with the new patient. Now, I'm not saying that hygienists or front desk people or treatment coordinators can't have this conversation, but I'm saying for the most impact, have the dentist do it. The four chiefs conversation occurs before any clinical procedures, before x-rays, before trip to hygienist, new patient comes in, they check in at the front desk, they go to a private talking area like the consultation area, or maybe an operatory if you don't have a consultation area. And now we're gonna have a conversation with this patient to discover the outside the mouth issues. Remember outside in? Well, the four chiefs allows us to discover those issues. The four chiefs are a replacement for the concept called chief complaint. See, chief complaint has to do with the single condition that they brought the patient in. And this might work okay for left side patients, but for right side, for complex care patients, Chief condition is an inadequate inquiry into the patient's mindset. It doesn't give you enough information about the outside the mouth issues. So what we're gonna do is the four chiefs conversation is gonna revolve around discovering, number one, what is the chief condition? That's very much like the chief um, uh, uh, complaint. What is the condition that brought the patient in? The next thing that we'll discover in this conversation is how does this condition hinder their lifestyle? How does it get in their way? Third will be the chief benefit. The chief behavioral benefit is always the opposite of the chief disability. This is really key that you get here, okay? The key here is once you understand the disability, then you automatically learn the behavioral benefit the patient is seeking. And then finally, will be the chief fit issue. That is those life circumstances that we need to acknowledge to this patient to help them fit the dentistry into their lives. The four chiefs conversation. This is the initial conversation with the dentist before any clinical procedures. Again, the chief condition is the easiest thing to discover. Our new patient, Christine, comes in. Say, Christine, hey, welcome to the practice. I'm Dr. Paul Homley. What brings you in today? And then Christine goes into her speech. You know, you've seen it many times. Patients take their finger and they put it in her mouth. Christine says, well, I don't like this. I don't like this tooth. I don't like this tooth. And she goes on to explain that these front teeth are a problem for her. And so you, you give her a good listening to, okay? And now what I would say to you, almost 99% of the dentists that I work with, once they hear the chief condition, it's like the conversation is over. They start thinking about, well, how can I fix the condition? 
And what I'm going to say to you is stop thinking about how you're going to fix the condition and be more curious about why that condition interferes with the patient's lifestyle. That will be the conversation around the disability. So Christine says, well, you know, it's these teeth here that are bothering me. And I said, well, Christine, you know, I see in your record, it's been a while since you've been into the dentist. Why now? Why is it important to you now that we improve the appearance of the front teeth? Well, she lights up like a Christmas tree. She says, oh, my daughter's getting married and I'm gonna be mother of the bride. And we got this big reception planned. And you know what? These front teeth just don't look good and I wanna look good for the photos. Bingo. All of a sudden you understand what her disability is. Her disability is that she's worried that she's not gonna be beautiful at her daughter's wedding. What woman wouldn't feel like that? So now that we know the disability, now we automatically know the behavioral benefit. The behavioral benefit is that she wants to look great at her daughter's wedding. Let me give you a little tip on disability. The tip on disability is, is you've got to be curious about how the condition interferes with their life. Now with left side patients, this may not work at all because they don't have disability when they walk in. But for right side patients who have had conditions that have bothered them for a while, you may say something like, you know, it's, you, you said it's been a while since you've been in, why is it important now? Or you may say something like, you may ask, oh, well, how does this, you know, Christine, how do these dark front teeth, how does that get in your way? Is that a problem for you at work? Or is it a problem for you uh, at home? Uh, tell me, how does this interfere with your life? And, and what you'll do is you'll surprise patients by that question. You'll surprise them because they're not accustomed to being asked that question. But I tell you, once you ask the question and stay open to this conversation, patients will reveal to you what they're looking for. Maybe it's being like Christine, being you know, beautiful at her daughter's wedding, or maybe someone's going for a job promotion, or maybe they just got divorced and they're back on the market. Whatever it is, whatever it is, once you understand the behavioral benefit, now, you can talk to the patient in benefit-related language. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. The last chief is the chief fit issue. The chief fit issue is, is all those outside the mouth issues. Remember the outside in process, all those outside the mouth issues. And so here, the chief fit issue is just, I'm just going to engage in the patient in some small talk or some chit chat. You know, look at the record and say, hey, Christine, I see that you live on York Road. Have, have you lived there long? And then she starts talking about, then I'll ask her about her family. Once she starts telling me about her family, I'll tell her a little bit about my family. I'll ask about her kids and where they go to school and that kind of stuff. And, and what you need to do, this is a terrific tip for you right here. You need to listen for fit issues that, that would, would, would get in the way of the patient accepting your care. It's going to be issues of budget. It's going to be issue of, of lifestyle and travel and work schedules. Be curious about the patient's family. Family issues are the leading issues for fit issues. It's going to be mortgages and education and in and, and school expenses and marriages and divorces and births and all those things that families go through. These are the events that right side patients need to fit our care into. They're called fit issues. Now, with Christine, we go through, we, we, we learned that, you know, she's helping her daughter uh, with the wedding. So this is expense and time. We know there's certain life events that she's got to deal with. There's the wedding. She also talks about maybe going to, uh, with her husband to Spain to visit her brother. We talk about schedule that relates to the work and the travel that she's doing. And we talk to her about family events. To the patient, it will seem like simple chit chat. Patients love this, especially right side patients that are looking for connection. Understand this, the right side patient, their dentistry is personal. It's personal to them. They want it to be personal to you too. And by engaging in this type of conversation gives them a sense of connection. And it's a great way to get off to a good start to the new patient experience. Okay, 
So we have the four chiefs conversation with Christine. Following that conversation, my dental assistant brings Christine to the operatory. And, and while she's in, being seated in the operatory, I would fill out a, a summary of the four chiefs conversation. That conversation is recorded in the patient chart so I can review it from time to time. Um, and then during the examination, I discover four and five millimeter peridot packing, a number 30 is missing, and Christine, seven through 10 are discolored, and she's got a fractured first molar. Those are my examination findings. Now, let's, let's put the thought process together of how we would present an outside-in approach for Christine's case presentation. We learned her outside the mouth issues through the four chiefs conversation. And all of that occurred before the, any clinical procedure. Now we do the clinical procedures. We do the x-rays, we do the examination. These are our findings. Now, now we're in a position to where we can assemble what I call the case conversation planner. This is a very simple planner. This planner is, it's a great rehearsal tool. You, you see, your, your treatment plan itself, that is the treatment sequence, is rarely the most influential sequence that you can go through with the patient. It's rarely the most influential because think about it, think about it. In, let, let me back up here a little bit. Here's, here's Christine's examination and her, her findings. Now, if I would ask most dentists, um, okay, you've done with the exam, you sit your chair up, and now you're going to have a conversation with Christine. What, you, what would you talk about first, second, third, and fourth? Most dentists would discuss, well, they discuss the perio first. They said, well, Christine, I looked in your mouth, I see some areas of gum infection. Gum infection is important that we keep this um, that we make sure that this gum infection doesn't uh, cause uh, you know, bone loss. It can create issues. Of the gum infection can spread to the other teeth. And then there's kind of a little mini lecture in patient education about what can be done about the gum infection, the periodontal disease, introduce it to the hygienist. But let me tell you, let me ask you something. Let me ask you this. When Christine walks into the dental office, is she thinking about periodontal health? <laughs> Is she thinking about periodontal health? No, she's not. I'll tell you what Christine is thinking about, and I'll tell you what every other right side patient is thinking about. They're thinking about the behavioral benefit they want to seek. And in Christine's case, she wants to be beautiful. She wants to have pretty teeth at her daughter's wedding. So Christine has got this little voice in her head that's going, pretty teeth, pretty teeth, I want pretty teeth, right? And Following the examination, most dentists would talk about, well, you've got gram-negative anaerobes you know, in your circular epithelium, and we're going to need to take sharp surgical instruments. And, and you get into this whole hygiene-centered conversation. Let me ask you, is Christine interested in a hygiene-centered conversation? I'm not talking about standard of care now. I'm talking about what she'll listen to, what she's interested in hearing. And I think most of you would agree that Christine is more interested in talking about pretty teeth. So I would suggest to you that the sequence of influence in the post-exam discussion is almost never, it's almost never the sequence of treatment. Now, this would be different. Let's take a different patient. Let's say the patient's name was Bonnie. And Bonnie comes in and she's all upset and Bonnie is 60 years old, and she says to you, oh, my goodness, I, I went home to visit, you know, my friends back in Chicago, and I went to see my old family dentist, Dr. O'Malley, and he said I had pyorrhea, I had some gum disease, and my gosh, I don't want to lose my teeth, and my mother lost her teeth, and I'm deathly afraid of losing my teeth to gum disease. And then you ask, well, Bonnie, I understand that's, you know, uh, that's something to be considered. Tell me, how does this how does this worry, how does this concern about losing your teeth, how, how does, is, is that something that bothers you all the time? She said, oh, it drives me crazy. Listen, I've got a young family, you know, I've got granddaughters and I got my kids and, and I don't want to set a bad example for them about me losing my teeth. I hate the way dentures look. Now you know her disability. 
Once you know that, now you know her behavioral benefit. Now, when she comes in, when you have the post-exam discussion, now you would discuss perio first. Why? Because that's the little voice in her head. So all of this, all of this boils down to you understanding why patients want their teeth fixed. We as dental professionals do a real good job of telling patients how we're gonna fix their teeth. You know, and, and, that, and that's the whole patient education thing. Frankly, I think patient education is horribly overrated as a patient influencing tool. And don't get me wrong, what I mean by that is that I believe most dentists think that patient education is the only way for us to influence patients to accept care. That may be true on the left side, but it's not true on the right side. Now, if you want to avoid losing patients from sticker shock, then it becomes really important that you know their behavioral benefit and their fit issues. And then you, you, you merge, you include their behavioral benefits and their fit issues into their treatment presentations. Let me show you how. This is a case conversation planner. This case conversation planner is from a large body of work that I've done on case acceptance for complete dentistry. It's called making it easy for patients to say yes. And I'll, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. The case conversation is it's as simple as you see it right here. You're going to assemble and rehearse your case conversation with Christine. Notice I'm, I'm not calling it a case presentation. I'm calling it a case conversation. A presentation is, is what I'm doing now. It's one-way conversation. It's a one-way dialogue. A case conversation is that I want to inspire a conversation, a two-way dialogue with the patient. So we're going to rehearse the case conversation starting at the top row, which is benefit. Then we're going to state the fit issues that we are aware of. Next, we're going to recommend treatment for those conditions patients are concerned about. Here's an important point. During your examination, when you discover a condition, it's really important that you, one, make the patient aware of the condition, state the consequence of that condition if it's left untreated, and third, determine concern for those consequences. Let me repeat that. As you find conditions in the patient's mouth and in the post-exam discussion, you're going to reveal those conditions the patients are aware of and not aware of. You're going to make them aware of it. You're going to state the consequences of those conditions if they're left untreated. And number three, you're going to be curious about whether they're concerned about those consequences. You and I both know that there's many conditions in patients' lives that they're not concerned about. And the point I wanna make here is that when we recommend care, we're gonna recommend care for concerned conditions differently than we do for unconcerned conditions. So in this sequence of influence, we're going to present treatment for concerned conditions first and unconcerned conditions second. Why? Because patients listen better for concerned conditions. Finally, the last step in the case conversation is a patient advocate handoff. I, I use the phrase patient advocate instead of treatment coordinator. Treatment coordinator is a job description. When you, when you label this person as patient advocate, that gives, that gives greater value to her role in the patient's eyes. So consider maybe switching up that role. You know, get a name tag or a desk, a desk plate that says patient advocate. That way patients get a sense of it. So what we've done now is there's, there's um, uh, there'll be some time after you've done the exam to assemble this, or in Christine's case, I probably would have um, brought Christine back for a second appointment for this, for this case conversation. Left side patients typically 
I recommend treatment. I'll do my treatment plan and treatment presentation or treatment conversation at the same appointment. For right side patients, I, you know, I may need to talk to you know, the lab or periodontist or the physician. I may need time to study their x-rays and models and scans and all that. I may need a little time to kind of get my head around the case. And so during that treatment planning time, I will actually assemble their case conversation. Then I'll rehearse, I'll rehearse the case conversation. In other words, I'll say it out loud. I'll practice with a team member. You may know it as role playing. I know, <laughs> I know. Dentists and team members hate role playing. They rather use each other's toothbrushes than role play. I know that, but I guarantee you there's only one way that you'll become very comfortable with the style of approach that I'm going to show you. Now, do you need to role play every case conversation? No, but I would say you would need to role play maybe the next 20 just to get a feel for it. So here we are. So in the first, in the first row, we list the behavioral benefit the patient is looking for. How do we discover that? In the four chiefs conversation. We know that she wants to be, she wants to look great for her daughter's wedding, uh, uh, for her daughter's wedding and in the photos. She wants to have confidence in her appearance. Next is her fit issues. Well, what, what has she got going on in her life right now that's gonna take time or money or inconvenience? Well, the wedding, the wedding is a big deal, but there's also wedding expenses, wedding time. Plus she's got some business travel, right? And, and she's thinking about going to Spain with her husband. How do we know this stuff? We know this through the Four Chiefs conversation. So that's the second thing we're gonna present. The third thing is we'll present in a very simple way, in a very simple way, treatment for her concerned conditions first. Seven through 10, perio and 19. How do we know she's concerned about perio? How do we know we, she's concerned about 19? Because we asked her, remember when we found the condition, we. We said, are you aware of it? Did you know you had gum infection? You know, then consequences. Typically patients of mine who've got this type of infection uh, find that it can develop into mouth odor. Oftentimes this infection can spread to the front teeth, ruining their appearance. Finally, we ask about the, the cracked tooth on number 19. They say, yes, they're concerned about that. But when we, when we talk about number 30, we say, I know you're aware that you've got a missing tooth or, you know, patients who are missing teeth, typically end up losing more teeth. When a tooth is missing, the other teeth can kind of tip in. It's kind of like taking a thick dictionary out of a crowded bookshelf. When teeth tip and move, what happens is the bite doesn't fit very well and can cause further tooth loss. Does that concern you? Is this something you want to talk to me about? And Christine says, well, yeah, I'm concerned about it, but I'm, I'm more concerned about really looking great for my daughter's wedding. I would say, I understand. Okay, I didn't say I agree, I say I understand. And what I'm, what I'm telling her is that I've heard you, but I also know that she's not concerned at this time. And finally, the patient advocate handoff. When I have this conversation with Christine, I'm gonna have my patient advocate in the room with me so she can hear or he can hear everything that I'm saying to Christine. So. I've done, Christine came in, we had a four chiefs conversation. I did the exam. During the exam, I discovered those conditions she was concerned about, she's not concerned about. Um, I've got all my diagnostics are taken. And in this case, let's say I dismiss Christine. It comes back a couple of days later and now she's back in my consultation area. And now I'm going to present her care. I'm gonna follow right along this from top to bottom. Listen to this case conversation. And I'm gonna to talk to you like you're Christine. Well, Christine, welcome back to the practice. I've, I've spent some time looking at your x-rays and your, your photographs and your models. And I feel really good about getting you looking great at your daughter's wedding. I know that's an important thing for you. I also know that you've got a lot on your plate right now. You've got some business travel coming up. You've got your hands full with the wedding. Let, let me introduce to you my patient advocate, Joy. And, and again, I have my patient advocate in the office. I would say to Christine, Christine Joy is an expert at helping our patients find ways to fit the dentistry into her life. She's an expert on scheduling. She's an expert on dental insurance. And when you and I are done talking today, you and Christine will have a chance to talk. And then there would be a little introduction of Christine to my patient advocate, Joy. Then I would continue with Christine. So Christine, I know your main concern is the front teeth. 
Uh, what I'm going to recommend is for the four front teeth, and I may point them out in my own mouth or show her a photograph. On your four front teeth, I'm going to recommend that we remove that dark and chipped enamel and replace it with a new enamel like material. And at this point, I, I probably would show her some before and after cases of some anterior veneers that I did, and I kind of point them out. I said then the second thing, Christine, we talked about was that gum infection. Um, this is the type of thing that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we don't want that infection spreading to the front teeth and ruining their appearance. My recommendation is I'm going to introduce you to our hygienist, Rita. Rita's been with me for 14 years. She's terrific with helping patients identify those areas of gum infection, and more importantly, understanding how to get rid of that infection. Finally, that area on your lower left where you got that broken filling, what I would do there is remove that cracked filling and replace the filling with a, with a porcelain-like material. We call it crowning the tooth. And again, I would show Christine a picture of, you know, maybe a, a mouthful of amalgams that we converted to either porcelain onlays or all porcelain crowns. And at this point, I would uh, introduce, reintroduce uh, Christine to the patient advocate, Joy. I would look at Joy. Now I'd have a conversation with Joy. I would say, Joy, uh, Christine is really interested in looking great at her daughter's wedding. You know, spend some time with Christine. Talk to her about her schedule and budget. Uh, then I'd look at Christine. Christine, I know that, you know, you've got, um, you're really looking forward to your daughter's wedding. Uh, spend some time with Joy. I'm going to be in the next room. When you two are done talking, I'll come back in and you and I will have a short conversation. It'll, it will be a consent conversation to make sure that you understand the benefits, risks, and alternatives to care. And at that point, I would leave. Okay. And at this point, the patient may ask, before I leave, the patient may ask me the fee. If so, I would say the fee or the patient may not ask the fee, and that's when, when Joy, my patient advocate, would take over. And, and from that point, when Joy and Christine are done talking, I would return back in the room. I want you to hear what I'm saying right now. I would return back in the room, and I would do informed consent. I would talk about the benefits, risks, and alternatives to treatment. Everything, all the patient education aspect of this, I would do. So what we've done here is this case conversation is a conversation about influence. The consent conversation is about education. And now we've got the best of both worlds, okay? It's really important that when you, when you recommend conditions for patients that are not, they're concerned about, you preface your recommendation. Christine, I know you're concerned about the front teeth. I know you're concerned about the gum infection. When you recommend treatment for patients, there are conditions patients are not concerned about, acknowledge their lack of concern. Say, Christine, I know you're not concerned about that missing back tooth, but I want you to know that I am. And when you're ready, my recommendation would be, and then I would make the recommendation as if she was concerned. You see, this way, there's no sense of sales pressure. There's no sense of over-educating patients on this. I've said to her, I know you're not concerned, but I want you to know that I am. That's a legitimate statement on my part. And I want you to know when you're ready, my recommendation would be, and now I make the recommendation. We don't have a choice in that matter. We need to alert patients to the outcomes of their conditions if they're left untreated. And, and what you'll end up doing here is you'll be presenting complete care to patients. You see what complete care is, complete care is constituted with concerned and unconcerned conditions. And, and where we lose patients from sticker shock is that we don't, we don't know how to present um, treatment for conditions patients aren't concerned about. We tend to over-educate them on unconcerned conditions. And when unconcerned conditions don't fit into a patient's lifestyle, and we continue to educate and educate and educate, that's when patients feel sales pressure, that's when you lose them from sticker shock. So what I've done here in this short period of time is to give you an idea about treatment acceptance conversations for those patients with, with right side dental needs. Can you apply this on the left side? Of course you can. 
but it really works best on the right side. You know, the, the last slide I want to show you here is if you're interested in more information, understand I've got a whole body of work. I probably have the largest body of work of treatment acceptance available in dentistry today. I've written three books on the topic. I have two online programs. One is uh, making it easy for patients to say yes. That's an online program that's suitable for mid-career dentists who are who are interested in doing more complex care cases, you know, implants, cosmetic dentistry, TMJ. I also have an online program that's designed specifically for new dentists, for new dentists who are still building their confidence and talking to patients. It's more about building their confidence. It's more about letting them know that the, the treatment conversation is really a conversation based on leadership, not on sales. So at this point, and, and there's my web address, you can go online, you can read all about it. And at this point, uh, Tim and Chris, my friends at TNT Dental, um, we have about 10 minutes left for any questions that have come in uh, on our um, GoToWebinar uh, channel. Yeah. So any questions or comments? Great, great. Thank you, Dr. Homily. Uh, that was just fantastic content. Um, we greatly appreciate you sharing this with us uh, today. And uh, yes, we do have a few questions. Um, so the first question is, uh, they say, I'm, cu I'm curious if you classify patients during your evaluations as right or left in order to tailor your approach to their specific needs. And if and is your team trained to make such an evaluation as well? Oh, absolutely. This has to be a team effort. You see, this, this whole understanding of left and right side patient can actually start on the telephone. You know, people that manage the phone, you know, they talk to patients. And all you need to do is be just moderately curious about the patient's condition. You know, when they call and they say, I'd like to get an examination appointment, you say, fine. You, you know, you give us a little sense about your dental condition. Or, are you, you missing any teeth or are you concerned about the appearance of your teeth or do you have any significant dental fears? One, one of the best hints you can get about left side, right side is date of birth. You know, if they're over 50, chances are they've got some right side dental needs. So this is just not the dentist. This is the entire team. That's why I was saying earlier today when Tim did my introduction, this is terrific material for you to study with your team while you've got this shelter at home stuff. Hygienists need to be expert at the poor chief's conversation. Absolutely. So this is a this is a whole team kind of deal. Great. Uh, thank you. And from Ashley, she says, what are some strategies to help fit dentistry into patients' lives after we get back in the office? Oh, wow. Well, you know, when you get back into the office, you're going to have a surge of dental demand because of the because you, if you stop dental services, patients' conditions will be worsening. So you, you can expect an uptick uh, in, in demand. But also what you can expect is, you know, this COVID-19 crisis is, is creating significant unemployment. And so this conversation about fit issues becomes even more important. You're not going to overcome some, somebody's inability to accept complete care. You're not gonna overcome that. I don't care how much education you give someone, if, it, if they can't afford it, they're not going to accept it. And if you continue to beat them over the head with patient education, they'll walk out your door because patient education in the face of a fit issue that doesn't work for the patient feels like sales pressure. So I would say to Ashley, Ashley, what you do is as when you come back, institute this four chiefs conversation into your new patient uh, process. And, and most dental offices, the new patient comes in, what happens? They get x-rays, maybe a visit to the hygienist. It may be a half hour to 45 minutes before they even see the dentist. What I'm saying is don't do that. Don't do that. Check the patient in, then put the patient in the room with the dentist and do the four chiefs. Find out what conditions they have, what's the disability, what are the benefits, and most importantly, how does it need to fit into their life? And when you do that with patients, wow, you just give them this huge experience of being understood and they'll love you for it. Will everyone accept care? No, they won't. They won't. My process does not guarantee case acceptance. What my process guarantees is you won't lose patients. 
And when they become ready, they'll return to you. I really want you to get that. That's a big deal. What else? Great. Um, okay, uh, next question. Do you always give payment options and what kind of payment options do you recommend, if any? Well, yes, you know, typically when I do the case conversation, I'm very open with patients talking about money. I know a lot of doctors aren't, but I believe the higher the fee, the more important it is for the dentist to quote the fee. So in Christine's case, when I would go through that and I would say uh, at the end of the case conversation, I would ask, well, Christine, do you have any questions for me? Her first question might be, well, how much will all this cost? Here's how I do it. I will quote her total treatment fee, including the conditions she's not concerned about. I'll quote the total treatment fee. I'd say, Christine, your total care uh, fee is $11,200. Now, Christine, that includes the missing tooth that I know that you're not concerned about, but I wanted to give you an idea of what the total cost would be. The, the cost of your care, what, what fixing the front teeth, working with the gum infection, fixing that broken tooth on your left side is $8,200. Does that work for you? And, and what I would do is give her a sense of scale, but I always start with the highest fee first, because then as you quote the fees going down the scale, it feels less expensive than the total care fee. That way patients, and I'm telling you, I, I said it earlier, most right side patients aren't ready. They're not ready for complete care the first time they hear their treatment plan. But I want them to know what their complete care needs are. So a year or two from now, when they become ready, they'll, they'll return. Or during recall visits, I want them to know what their complete care needs are. So the hygienist can reinforce the conversation about complete care needs. And there, there's a whole host of, <coughs> excuse me, there's a whole host of financing providers. Uh, there's Lending Tree and Care Credit, and there's a whole load of financing providers that can get into that. And I suspect you're going to need to get a lot better with that or begin to uh, include more of financing options post COVID-19 because you know, budgets are going to be tight following COVID-19. There's no question about that. Okay, great. Uh, two more questions. Um, Richard says, um, when a new patient calls and says they just want a cleaning, um, how would you handle that? I, I wouldn't handle it any differently than I just said. The patient says, I want to call. I just want to clean. And say, we're, we're glad to do the cleaning for you. Um, but before you come in, can I ask you a few questions? And he says, sure. He said, well, Richard, are you... Are you missing any teeth? Do you have any, any yes or no? Are you concerned at all about the appearance of your teeth? Yes or no? Um, do you have any significant dental fear? Yes or no? Uh, could I have your date of birth, right? And, and from that conversation, you can get a feel. And so then I would say, well, Richard, we're glad to uh, clean your teeth at this initial appointment, but let me give you a choice. You know, we'd be glad to do that cleaning for you. Um, or perhaps in addition to that, would this appointment be a good time for us to look at all your teeth and help you prevent any problems in the future? What would be better for you at your initial appointment? And then let the patient choose the scope of care that they're ready for. Does that make sense? Mm, yep, fantastic. Um, okay, actually two more questions. We'll sneak these in. What is, okay. uh, Jen says, what is the strategy for right side patients that have overall perio concerns but they are not concerned about these issues and want want you to fix what their main concerns are. I like, say, yeah, especially especially when the treatment is on an area that does not have a good foundation. Absolutely, yes. That you, and we run into that all the time. That's probably normal. I, Eighty percent of all restorative patients. When you look at those fifty and sixty year old patients, they got restorative needs. I guarantee you, they've got periodontal needs too. Here's what I do: is I link I link periodontal treatment to the behavioral benefit they're looking for. So for example, let's say, let's just say in Christine's case, let's go back to Christine. Let's say she told me during the examination when I, when I uh, revealed to her that she had gum disease, she says, um, yeah, you know, I've been told that before, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really interested in that. I, I'm more interested in these front teeth. I would say, I understand Christine. Now in the case presentation, in the case conversation, I would link I would link the periodontal care to her behavioral benefit. I would say, Christine, you know, we, before we talked about the, the gum health and the gum infection, 
I would say to you, Christine, the biggest benefit of you uh, treating this gum infection is that I don't want the gum infection to spread to the front teeth and ruin their appearance, right? I don't want it to ruin your appearance. And that would remove the confidence you have in your appearance. You see, I would link periodontal issues to the main behavioral benefit they're looking for. That way, there is a prescriptiveness. There's a prescriptiveness to the periodontal care. And what I mean by prescriptiveness is prescriptiveness is when you attach the reason for the treatment of the condition to the behavioral benefit the patients are looking for. So, and in those cases where the patient says, okay, I understand periodontal health, I get it. I still don't want it. Then I would say, well, I understand. I'll tell you right now, I'd love to say yes to you, but I'm really required by law and dental ethics that I can't, you, I can't provide that treatment for you. And I, I would say this to you, when you're ready for us to treat your, your gum health, uh, we'd be glad to do it for you. Because what am I gonna do? Restore teeth with periodontal situations? No. So there's no, I don't have any magic phrases to uh, deal with patients that are obstinate uh, uh, relative to common sense. I, I, sure. don't, I don't have a solution to that. Makes perfect sense. Okay, last question, Dr. Homley. It okay, seems one like, more, one more, guys. It seems like you have uh, a natural ability to make these um, types of presentations. If someone is not naturally talented, how do they get better? You practice. You practice. I just gave you that that case conversation planner. That's good as gold. I'm telling you, that's good as gold. And these online programs you're looking at right now, I have videotaped myself doing the treatment plan to Christine, right? You'll see me do it with Christine as a live patient. You'll see the initial Four Chiefs conversation. You'll see my post-exam discussion where I determine concerned versus unconcerned conditions. And you'll see me do the case conversation. These online programs are terrific for that. And I'll tell you what, um, seeing that this whole crisis thing has hit, I have dentists who are looking to stay connected to their teams. So the dentist is at their home and their team members are spread out all over the spot. They, they're doing the online program together. Plus, I cut, I cut the tuition in half. It, we're, we're, we're all in this together. And I'm just throwing in my hat in the ring and saying, well, I'll be here with you. So if you want to get better, you've got to study at this stuff. And the online program, is it, it, that's your ticket right there. Great. Great. Well, uh, I think that's all the time we have for questions today. Um, uh, I want to thank everyone for spending your time with us today. Thank you, Dr. Homily, for sharing your wisdom. This has uh, just been fantastic. Uh, you I hope you all got a lot of uh, good ideas from the presentation and are planning to implement these in your practices going forward. Uh, so thanks again, Dr. Homily. Thanks, everyone. Hope everyone has a great afternoon. All right. Stay safe, everybody. Bye now. Bye-bye.